Welcome to the Band in a Box 2006 for Windows demo. You're hearing Band in a Box playing back through the Roland VSC DXI synthesizer and we're using ASIO drivers so there's uh, almost zero latency, in this case uh, about 10 milliseconds latency, so you can play along on the piano. Uh, as you uh, use your through channel to be uh, playing along. So we're going to explore some of the features of Band in a Box. One of them is present in this song which is a change of patch changes so that whenever uh, this particular style, uh, whenever it gets from A to B it changes patches from uh, acoustic bass to synthesized bass and that sort of thing. And that's uh, going to be part of what we're talking about. And we can go through some of the newest features which should be found on your um, toolbars and um, there's a sequencer window which allows you to create multiple channel tracks on either the melody or the soloist track now you may not need to do that most of the time because you just use a simple melody but if you wanted to have say a melody that had four different parts to it all on different um, uh, channels so they'd all have separate counter melodies with se separate patches you can do that now with the sequencer window or simply load a MIDI file to the melody track and have access to all the channels and that can display properly on lead sheet and we'll go over some of those features another feature is a conductor window which if you launch um, has a lot of buttons on it and uh, but this allows live control of the song either jumping to certain sections of the song or setting loops for certain things on the song or allowing you to go back a certain amount or go ahead a certain amount and more importantly instead of having to use this big dialogue as you're playing you can enable control by the QWERTY keys and then there's hot keys for example if you just use the 1 to 10 hot keys you'll jump to that section of the song or you can define your own uh, hot keys uh, so you can define specific spots that you can jump to on the song um, and there's also MIDI keyboard control which means you can do all this from your MIDI keyboard and there's a list of all the MIDI notes that will trigger it um, in here and also the fly-by hints that uh, come up will give you the names of the MIDI note that would uh, be necessary to do that. So the conductor window al allows you to when you're having a jam session or just playing along with pan in a box to be able to just control the playback as it's going along or if you're using Band in a Box to perform live it would be as simple as if you're in the last chorus and um, the saxophone player looks like he wants to take a solo you would just press number four and then the middle choruses would start soloing and it looked uh, if you looked like he was about finished you might use um, a hotkey saying well at the end of the next chorus why don't we go to the end of the song and that sort of thing so you can get some fine control over it and we'll be exploring the conductor um, a little bit later to begin with I'll show you the ASIO settings um, this is the purpose of using ASIO would be if you want if you're using a DXI synth for your sound instead of a normal MIDI driver and 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 then if you specifically wanted to have zero latency zero latency means that if you were playing along from your uh, a keyboard for a MIDI through you get a virtually instant response and so we'll show you how to set that up if you want to set up ASIO drivers first thing you do is press the uh, preferences button and then uh, for then you press the audio settings and you'll see that the audio driver type normally it's set to MME but you can now set it to ASIO drivers and if you set to ASIO you will see the names of the drivers and on this particular computer we have creative ASIO uh, driver is the only one installed and for our output uh, they have a lot of um, S suggestions for you but the first one is is the is the most applicable one that you want to use output port for wave and for input we want uh, to be mixed now your ASIO driver will have its own set of ports to use and um, ASIO drivers uh, control panel um, is something important now this is something that the driver company supplies so when you launch that you see creatives um, 
control panel which merely allows you to set the latency. So in this example we set the latency to 7 milliseconds which is um, not the lowest setting but it's one of the lowest settings that, that they have and so if the latency is set to 7 milliseconds you will have very little uh, latency and ASI IO always on if you always want the MIDI sent to DXI. Otherwise the ASIO DXI through will only be heard if the VU meters is dialog is uh, is currently opened. So um, we will um, uh, show you that the audio latency we set it to seven milliseconds due to a technical reason with ASIO the uh, the actual latency that's used is is set at double that and it's as we've shown it's settable by the con creative lab c the dialogue not by us so if we clicked in here it would uh, get a message telling us that to not bother changing it here that you want to change it in the control panel like we just did but uh, anyway so that's how we set to ASIO and if we wanted to go back to our MME drivers which is the default with Windows we would do that and um, so um, now we'll uh, c continue with uh, with demonstrating some other aspects of the program. Let's examine some of the new features on the notation window. For starters, uh, the modes of the notation window are now represented by these three buttons. Uh, this one is for regular notation mode. You might remember there was an N button on the previous one. This replaces that. Regular notation mode, editable notation, where you can actually see where the pegs are that you insert the notes are, and then the staff roll mode, uh, which actually has the bar uh, li uh, beat lines right here, much like a piano roll does. So uh, there's new features for notation symbols, and you'll notice when you go onto this um, editable notation mode that if you right-click, you have a new menu here, and we can do things like in insert the section text, insert section letters, uh, put notation symbols on, such as new symbols like slurs, crescendo, decrescendo, staccato accent, regular accent, legato accent, etc. And then we can even adjust the height of a particular chord. This just tells you what the current uh, state of the window is. So to show you how these features work, um, we can add a few notation symbols. For example, if we wanted to add a staccato marking on that note, we would just uh, click for a staccato marking. And if we wanted to add a legato marking on another note, we would just choose that. Uh, here's what we're going to be getting. Length of event is not important for uh, or not applicable, and here's where it's going to be inserted on. So then we have the legato and the staccato marking. If we wanted to um, put a, um, a slur on a note, we do notation symbols, slur, and that one does have a length associated with it. We'd like the slur to last for one beat. And then we have a slur on that uh, on that note. And um, um, there's other symbols that you can insert, such as crescendo, decrescendo, staccato, etc. And these other markings can be done in a similar manner. Um, section letters can be put on. If you want uh, a section letter, you click on the spot that you'd like the section letter. For example, if we want a section letter here and we want uh, section letter B, we'll get a B on there. And then uh, all these symbols show up in the um, um, regular notation mode and can be printed and that sort of thing. And that's um, some of the new uh, notation features. Previous versions of Band in a Box, the styles could only have one set of instrument changes. Now, uh, styles can be built with two instrument changes. Uh, for every substyle, A and B can it have its own set of patches. And we do include some new styles that have these features, and usually that will be described in the memo. For example, this style, we're told that at A it's using acoustic piano, and at B we've brightened that up a little bit by changing it to bright acoustic piano. The acoustic bass has been changed to syn bass 2, etc., and that strings have been added. Now, if you wanted to examine uh, this style, you would enter the style maker, and uh, Control shift f 9 is the hotkey for that, or it's available under the Styles menu. And if you check, click on the Patch Change button, you'll see that Use Separate Patches for A and B Substyle have been selected. And these are the A Substyle patches, and here is the B one. So you can see the 
bass has changed to Sin Bass 2. We've changed to Bright Piano. And this is obviously Substyle B. And um, so you can easily create um, styles this way. And these are compatible with previous versions of Band in a Box. If you sent this style to somebody with an old version, they would get nothing but the A substyle patches, which in most cases should work out fine. And uh, if you look on your style, if you're wondering, you want to explore some styles that we've made that do uh, use this feature, we have a category list called Styles with Instrument Changes. And this lists all the various styles. Um, depending on which, uh, if you have the Mega Pack, you have all of them. If you, if you just have Styles Disk 58, you would probably uh, only have the ones on Styles Disk 58, which are these styles here, and you could examine these styles and listen to them, and, and you can see what sort of patch changes they have. So, uh, you can, as I said, you can make your own, or you can take existing ones that we've made and add patch changes to them, or just um, uh, use the ones that we've already made for you on these uh, newer styles disks. We have a uh, sequencer window uh, which allows you to edit multi-channel tracks that you put on a melody. Now normally, uh, for normal melodies, you don't need to use anything to do with a sequencer track. But if you're uh, loading a MIDI file um, onto the track, you do need a um, uh, then you'll have multiple channels all on your melody file and you want, might want to be able to manipulate them, for example, isolating the melody or deleting the drum track or something like that so that it's uh, ready to use and band in a box. So for starters, if we go File, Open MIDI File, we can open uh, in a MIDI file and of course there's other ways to make, um, so here we're opening a MIDI file in band in a box and it's figured out the chords for us. And uh, now uh, we can notice that our melody has automatically been changed to multi-16 channel, which is a prerequisite for using this sequencer window. Because when it is set to multi-16 channel, that means that the channels used by the melody track will not be the channel set for melody. It'll be whatever channels are present on, on that track. The other thing is, of course, when you've uh, loaded in um, a MIDI file, the style is not enabled anymore and it's uh, so that it doesn't conflict. But if you turn that back on, you'd hear the band in a box channels as well. So right now, uh, th this is the song that we have going. Okay, you notice if we enter the sequencer track, and we can do that as the song is playing, uh, it'll ask us do we want to go onto the melody track or the soloist track. So we'll choose the melody track and you can you can see that here it's told us these are the channels that are being used in the um, in the piece. Channel 2 is using acoustic bass, 3 is piano, 4 is trumpet. So right away we know that 4 is probably the melody of this track and now you can select which of these tracks you want to play or if you wanted to uh, notice which ones are to show or if you just wanted to say I want them all to play you would you would click on this quickly but for example if we turn these off we can isolate only the trumpet melody playing now with these tracks you can edit them uh, you can say let's change that trumpet melody to Rhodes and this is changed onto the track and you could say I don't want uh, I would only like acoustic bass uh, to show on my notation. Right now all these tracks would still show up on notation but if you said I, on, I, I only want my melody and my bass part to show up on notation you could do that. There are some editing functions available too. For example if you wanted to delete this um, bait par bass part completely you can um, you can do that. Or if you wanted to rechannel rechannelize the bass to channel um, 11 uh, or 13 or something, 14, you could do that like that and and then, then it would appear on, on that and then it's and then we turn the, the play status off of that. So um, uh, these are some of the uh, features you can do with um, the uh, uh, sequencer window. You can also take this um, uh, melody track and send it over to the soloist track 
So if you've loaded in a MIDI file, one of the most common uses, well, of course, you could play the entire MIDI file, but you might want to just view it in notation and band in a box, or you might want to just isolate the melody. And in, in this case, we'd probably just delete all these tracks so we don't see them anymore. And then we'd, then we'd be left with just the melody track in band in a box. And if you wanted to delete, um, if you've loaded a MIDI file like we've done here, uh, there's an entire MIDI file playing on the track because the style is disabled. If we wanted to delete all the instruments except the melody, we could do it as follows. First of all, we'll stop it playing, and then we'll go to the melody track. We know it's the trumpet's on channel 4 because it's got the melody. We'll delete all the melody events here. We'll delete all the tracks except the trumpet. And now, now we've deleted all the tracks. And now when we press OK, Band in a Box um, is helping us out. It, it says, you've got this thing set to a multi-channel track, but there's really only data on one channel. Um, would I like to set the track back to single channel? And if you, uh, basically Band in a Box is doing the same thing that you could do up here. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll answer yes, and then the track is no longer a multiple channel track. It's just a simple track that has a melody on the uh, melody track, which is right here. And um, this, uh, so this feature obviously allows you to do that, to take a MIDI file and, and end up with the uh, MIDI file on, a, on a just the melody. But you can do a lot more with it as we've shown. You can change the patches or you can move the channels around or you can bounce the melody track to the soloist track as well. It also, if you use the event list, you can edit all of the notes uh, on the event list because they're color-coded to um, channels. So um, there's a lot of features that you can do with this new sequencer window. But one point to remember is, you know, if you're just using Band in a Box for simple Band in a Box files with a melody, then you won't need to use a sequencer window. It's for more advanced uses such as reading in a MIDI file or um, or recording multiple parts. For example, if you wanted to have you know seven different parts playing on this track, um, all on different channels, well, Band in a Box is previously limited to two. And the way you would do that, if you wanted to add, say, a counter melody, you would set it back to multi-channel. And then when you press record, make sure overdub underlying melody is set, which it will be set by default. And then when you record and play a few notes, then you'll notice that when you press stop, um, this new thing has appeared, which only appears for multi-channel tracks. And it will say, what channel do you want to record to? And what patch do you want to use? And maybe you want to use, uh, uh, for your counter melody, maybe you want to use vibes. And may maybe you want that to be recorded to channel 11. And if you do that, then it is recorded to a channel 11, and you could uh, hear both of those uh, tracks and work with them uh, later. If you examine it on here, you'll see the channel 11 with nine notes in there, and th that's how you've recorded to multiple um, uh, tracks. We're going to show you a feature called MIDI Normalize, which is useful if you're uh, playing... Um, in a jam session or on a job, and you would like the volumes of all your files to be roughly the same. Uh, you may have uh, got styles from different sources, and uh, they some might be too loud or some might be too quiet. Obviously, you want them all to be at the same uh, volume. Uh, here's a very, uh, very quiet style, and there, uh, if you load in other songs, you might notice that the, you know, the files are a bit louder. So. Um, this feature will will uh, eliminate that problem. Now, what you do here is you press the Preferences button, press the Arrangement button, and you'll see the Normalize feature. So if you click on Normalize, you can specify, uh, let's, uh, let's normalize all our velocities to 68. Now, the range here is 0 to 127. And if you, you can then, you can say, do I just want my band in a box tracks, bass, drums, piano, guitar, and strings um, done, or do I want everything normalized? And you might say, well, actually, my melodies are, are fine. It's just these styles that are at different volumes, in which case you would leave that set. So now, when you press play, you'll notice uh, that um, the, the uh, styles are... Uh, 
are uh, normalized. And uh, this is uh, an 800 by 600 monitor, so we can't see it, unfortunately. But the, uh, at the top of your screen, if you use 1024, you'll see uh, just confirmation that it's normalized. And that's appearing right up here for us. And it'll tell you uh, what, the, uh, what the previous volume was in the file. But um, you find this useful. And it's bringing up the volume, so they're all at about the volume of 70. You'll notice another feature on, in Band in a Box, which is called... Uh, which is on the display window, which shows that we're auto-adjusting the rows. Now, if you don't auto-adjust the rows, you would click this off, and this says, I always want 12 rows. But if you say, uh, I don't necessarily want 12 rows, I want uh, this range of rows between 10 and 17 rows, then whenever you will load in a band in a box song, if, for example, if it had 64 bars, uh, that takes uh, about 16 rows to display, plus an extra one for uh, the ending. So that would take 17 rows, and Band in a Box would show you 17 rows. Uh, similarly, if you loaded in a song that was shorter than that, it would use less rows. So we have this feature enabled, and you can see when we're loading in various songs, see Band in a Box for this song, because it ends in 36, it only needs 10 rows, and in the previous song, it, it, it'll use all 17. And um, depending on your monitor size, uh, you could set this to a very high value, and you would always have, basically the idea is that you would always have the whole song on screen at the same time. Um, and Band in a Box will be using the largest size font it can. So um, if you prefer that everything's back to the same uh, way it was, of course, you would set the display back to not auto-adjust rows and just leave everything at 12 rows. But the default is we set that on, which I'll leave on for the rest of the tutorial. There's uh, some new features in Band in a Box, uh, which we'll show you. Um, Number one, uh, if you select a range of bars, you can now make a MIDI file from that range of bars. For example, if we just wanted these six bars to be made, we click on the MIDI, and because we've selected a range, the first thing we get is to choose the range now. Uh, it's preset to the range we expect it to be, which is the range we clicked on. Now if you click on this, it will uh, generate a file, which of course is going to be pretty small because it's just 2 um, uh, K because it's just six bars. Uh, another way to do it would be if we didn't select a range, you could just click on this and then set the range uh, right here to be six bars or whatever whatever you wanted it to be, eight bars or uh, 18 bars. And then your MIDI file will get made and it'll of course be a little bigger. Um, so that's uh, that's what you can do. Um, now we're in a we're in a Another uh, feature uh, which you can see for the MIDI files is this batch mode. And uh, this is to allow you to make uh, MIDI files for every file in a folder. Um, and so if you click on the batch file mode, it will tell you that we're about to make a um, uh, batch from this particular um, folder, which is D. BB styles 55. We can change it here or we can just type in a new number here, but probably 55 is okay. And if that's the case, when we press go, we're going to see the program um, make MIDI files in, um, in all these uh, folders. And the 21 MIDI files have been made. And uh, so it's obviously a quick way to make MIDI files. You can have the files, name the MIDI files based on the file name, which case, uh, given that this file name is waltzmodal.mgu, the file will be waltzmodal.mid. Or if you wanted the file to be called waltzmodal sty demo find the onemid you would set it to be based on the um, song title. And before you make the batches, you probably want to have a look at the MIDI file options dialog to make sure that you're making them with all the settings, because uh, it's going to use the set same um, settings for each dialog. There's another feature here. Uh, if you typed in a chord like C11, uh, it'll display as C9sus, or vice versa. If you typed in C9sus, uh, it, it'll always display as C9sus. So, there is a new feature if you click on the preferences display 
you can set to display a C9 sus as C11, which uh, then some people prefer that. So here your A flat 11th is done there. And so here if you type in C9 sus, it will display as C11, and that will be throughout the program. So if you prefer to see 11th chords, you would use um, that particular um, feature. The MIDI monitor has been enhanced, and the MIDI monitor shows you, you, of course, whatever output is going on on channels. And if you look at the filter, there's a new options now um, for one-based patch numbering for programs and decimal changes and if you read the manual you can see there's been future f further changes made to the um, to the MIDI monitor. When you're rendering a song to a WAV file of course this is done in band in a box and the best way to do it is if you have a DXI like the DXI Roland VSC installed um, you can do it simply by doing this and pressing this uh, button and uh, this feature has been enhanced Number one, you can select whether you want the output to be a stereo file or a mono file. And uh, a new feature as well is you can decide whether you want, the normal case would be that you, you do not want one file per track, but uh, that you want one file with the entire recording. But if you're planning on using this, um, these WAV files in a sequencer like power tracks, you would want to separate the WAV files so that they're on separate tracks one for the bass and one uh, for the piano, etc., in which case you will select this option, and then you can simply render the file by pressing the button. And w here it shows we're completed with the uh, file size being um, 37 megs. And if we look in the folder, We can see that the files are all there, waltz, modal, render, solo, etc., for the various tracks that are present in the uh, file. You can see that the tracks uh, w are written here separately, and if you play them in any kind of uh, file, you'll just hear this is just a bass track, so obviously it just has the bass track information on it. And um, so that's how the rendering to WAVE for separate track works. The fake sheet mode has been enhanced and uh, we can show you, number one, we've loaded in a song that has first and second endings, uh, although this will work on the songs regardless if they have the first and second endings. Um, this shows the gray bars are showing you part of the, f uh, of the um, first ending in this case that that's can be shrunk down when you put the fake sheet mode on. But here we're examining the song in fake sheet mode and we see that this is a song that uh, goes along and has a first ending here and a second ending here and then on page two it goes along with the DC Alfine back to having the uh, Fine here. So um, if we wanted this song displayed previously we're getting four bars per screen whether we want it or not. Uh, now we're able to customize this for example you might say I want my first ending and the second ending here so I want six bars on this line and then go back to four on this and then so if I do that you'll see fake sheet bars per line and and this uh, works it's sort of explained a little bit in the tip here but um, you type uh, four bars for the first line six for the second and then four and then it will assume that that's bit if you wanted you know seven for the next one and eight for the next one and four for the next one and from then on four you would do that but for this it should be sufficient to do four six and then four and then you'll see there's four bars, six bars um, here, and then uh, four bars here. And uh, then, the, then the song will print out on uh, using, only, um, using only four rows. And so that applies to lead sheet display and print out. There's a new setting for um, global um, overrides, and we'll uh, show you how that works. You enter the preferences dialog, and then the override button. This um, allows you to set things uh, which will apply to all songs. For example, um, normally the overall looping setting is stored with the song individually, which is as set in the song. But if you never wanted to see looping on, for example, if you were going to do a live performance with Man in a Box, you might not want it to loop at the end of every song. So then you'd say always uh, set loop to off. Now you'll see that looping is off for this song and it's also off for every song that you load in. Similarly, you could set it for the opposite of that, which would be 
all was set looping to on and then of course that would happen. The other thing is if you for example never wanted reverb to be loaded from a song because uh, your synthesizer didn't respond well to reverb changes or, or you handle reverb a different way you would just select that and then band in a box will never load any reverb settings similarly you can have that apply to patch changes or harmony changes or volume settings S if you had for example last year if you'd made all kinds of songs and put volume changes in them and then wished you hadn't you could simply do this and one quick way is once you load in the song it'll have no volume changes in it and you f if you press save you'll be saving it without those volume changes so it'd be a quick way to update files as well and um, if you didn't want to load songs with notation symbols you can you can do that in this dialog as well there's a new feature in band in a box um, which will happen automatically but if you want to see how it's set you can see these settings in the arrangement options and that's when a style when a song is loaded and the style is not found band in a box will now search through uh, a huge list of styles to try to find the best substitute for you and you can edit that file by making uh, additional files or if you've got files from a third party they can make files to say if this f file isn't found you can use this one that way when you load in a funk style uh, and it's not found you won't get uh, a jazz style if it can find a possible replacement it'll give you a funk style First of all, if you didn't want that behavior, you could turn that uh, off. Uh, also, if absolutely nothing is found, it'll either give up or substitute a uh, default style. So if you're a funk lover, you'd probably put that uh, if nothing else is found, but you can specify which one. And also, there will be messages displayed if you want. Uh, we've got uh, a message displayed. If a substitute style found, a flashing message will appear. So. Here we have a, a, a song that has a style called Sad A2. Now I'll purposely make this style go missing by using Windows and by finding this style, which I've already done. I'll just rename it so it's not going to be found. Now we go back to Band in a Box, load in the next song. Now we're going to load in Sad A again. And you'll hear that you'll see this, that it, that it couldn't find it, but it substituted Ryan.style, which is a similar sounding style so you might wonder how did it know to do that and here we go into notepad and this is something that you normally wouldn't have to edit yourself but it's just showing you that there is a file in your band in a box folder called apg music na for style not available and uh, this is the file that we've done and each line we've here's a line entry and it's saying sad a2 dot style if that's not found use ryan one and if Ryan 1 isn't found, use this one, ZZ Miami Pop. So if you have made some custom styles yourself, you can create your own file. You'd call it mystyles.na, or uh, maybe a third party would send you his company name.na, and then, um, y then, you'd then they'd be able to, because Band in a Box loads in all of these files, and you can just see... Um, you know, instead of C. George, it's going to try to find C. Aki, C. Aaron, and if all fail else fails, it will find Light Rock. So that will should greatly reduce the style not found messages. If you still get a style not found um, uh, because you've got a style called Jazz 387, uh, you should make yourself a little uh, text file like this. Uh, and call it mystyles.na or something and write jazz387.sty equals and then the name of the styles you'd like to use as a replacement and that way uh, you'll see even less of the style not found messages there's a new feature which will allow you to play audio uh, at half speed um, so and there's also a new feature that will allow you to open audio files. So first of all, um, it'll work with any file, but let's make ourselves an audio file. Um, and this is, of course, a MIDI file. So we'll just direct render this uh, using band in a box. We can make ourselves this WAV file in a few seconds. And the progress is indicating that it's almost done. And now we have this file uh, waiting to be done. So. We'll start with a new file just for clarity and you uh, open audio file here and uh, now 
here's our WAV file waiting to be opened. And it'll also work with a WMA file or an MP3 file or even a CDA file, which is a file that's on your CD, audio CD. And you'll open it up and you can decide where to put it. Normally you'd want to put it at the very beginning of the song, which is minus one. And, but you could put it later on if you wanted uh, with a certain offset. And it'll tell you that this file is stereo. And then it's just reading this file in to the program. And now when you play it, so that's the obviously the file in audio. Now on the play menu here, there are some options to set the normal speed or half speed or quarter speed or an eighth speed. So this has some fast organ riffs in it. And you might want to you might want to learn them. So if you press Control minus, it'll do it at half speed. So it's useful for transcribing. So uh, it changes uh, cha obviously changes the, the tempo without affecting the pitch. So those are two new features, file open audio, which will open any of these files. There's an equivalent one if you've got an existing song and you just want to add audio to it, you can choose import audio and bring in a WMA, MP3, WMB, or WAV file to add to your audio or the file open. And then the other feature, which is that half speed tempo applies to the uh, audio. Note that that's for half speed, quarter speed, or an eighth speed, and those work with uh, audio. The regular tempo button uh, on the screen doesn't work for uh, audio. The TC Helicon audio harmony feature has been enhanced with the addition of a choir effect which allows one voice to sound like four voices and you can um, have uh, up to four harmony voices so that can give you a choir of 16 people plus the original singer and we'll show you how that works. Here's a song with a typical vocal Listen perform performance. Listen to the voice that fills your mind. So this song is a band in a box song which we recorded a um, uh, vocal part to. So now with the audio harmony feature, um, it will harmonize to our melody if we have a mid MIDI melody, uh, or it would just pitch fix the um, performance. But in this case, an easier method is just to say harmonize to the voices. And you'll see that with version 2006, we've added a lot of new presets, including unison voices, which hadn't been there before. Obviously, unison voice is singing the same pitches as the melody person. And the advantage of having unison voices is that a number of voices singing the same um, thing will, uh, if they're slightly different, will fatten up the sound. So here we can choose um, various ones. And let's choose two unisons and, and plus one person singing a harmony below and one person singing a harmony above. So that's four voices in addition to the regular uh, singer. Now we'll see the TC Helicon harmony dialog, which shows us these are our four voices. Here's our two unison voices. Here's one down. Here's one up. We can adjust the panning if we want for stereo purposes, that maybe we want the unison voices sp uh, spread a little bit and the down harmony here. Then we can apply choir effects. The choir, if it's large, it'll sound like four people on one, and various small, medium, and large will add smaller number of voices. There's an interesting setting here, which is humanization, which has the effect of uh, saying how practiced you want your choir to be. If, um, if we set it to a high setting here, they'll sound uh, like it's their first rehearsal and they need to um, get a little bit closer together. But we'll show you that effect uh, as we generate the file. It takes uh, a little while to generate the preview because uh, we're generating 17 voices. You'll see that we can also add vibrato effects uh, to I any of the voices which will give a pitch contour effect, much like a vibrato. We can assign gender assignments to each of the voices. For example, the up one, we could have assigned a female gender. gender. To the voice so here's that our choir. Fills your mind. So that you can hear is an effect of a 17-piece choir singing that song 
uh, uh, eight of them are doing unison voices, four of them are doing down one, uh, four are doing up one, and our original singer's here, and we could adjust his velocity here. And there's further settings you can do to adjust the pitch uh, accuracy uh, of it, and the portamento is how far he, uh, how quickly he slides into the new uh, new things. So these are new features that can allow one person to sound like a full choir. We're going to demonstrate the conductor part of the program. Uh, the conductor is intended to be used when the program is playing and allow you to navigate around the song easily. The intention is for if you're playing live, either practicing in your house or a jam session or having a performance, uh, you want to be able to control band in a box so that if it's about to end, you can tell it to keep on going and add a few choruses, that sort of thing. So here's the conductor window, which we'll open like that. The intention of this conductor window is that you're actually going to use how to control it with your typewriter keyboard, your QWERTY keyboard, or with your MIDI keyboard, one of the two. But obviously those are easier to do than use this. But this will, this is a sort of a, an area that shows you how, in general, how it's, how it's, how it's used. And uh, so, so we'll uh, get to that area of the program pretty soon. And we'll um, start the playback here. And this is, a, this is sort of a, a typical song with uh, three choruses and uh, a lot of band in a box songs are in this format. So first we'll show you how to do it with a band in a box song that's in this format. Um, with multiple choruses and then we'll show you how to customize it if you need to uh, to make uh, a song with very specific points to jump to so in this so we can show you on the video I won't be hitting all the hotkeys because you won't see what I'm hitting so I'll show you what I'm doing on the main screen okay and so now um, uh, these various sections will jump around and you can see up at the top where we're at we're at bar 28 but if I wanted to jump to the first chorus it tells us that I'm going to go to the first chorus. Now you'll notice it jumped as soon as I hit it, but it stayed in time, meaning if I hit it on beat 3, it would jump to beat 3 before the new chorus. So if people are dancing or other musicians are playing, you don't want them to suddenly be off time. And the reason it does that is we said the default mode for a section change is now and stay in time. If we wanted, we could set it to next bar. So even though I'll press this and, and I'll say go to the first chorus, don't do it right when I press it, do it uh, at the end of the bar. So I've pressed it, but it hasn't happened. So it, d it waited till the bar change for it to happen, which is nice. And you can, you can set those to any mode you want. You might not want the change to happen to the, the next bar. But you can also temporarily, uh, if you said usually I want it to go now, but for this one time, if I click on next bar, uh, you can jump and then it'll go on the next bar. It'll do the change. And then, it, as I said, that's a temporary setting because it'll always do the default mode. And all these are accessible by um, hotkeys. So you can jump around the song. We'll go to the middle chorus or, or to the last chorus or to the end of the song. Okay, well, let's start the song playing again. And um, um, now we can demonstrate that we can also use this to go ahead. You can go ahead a chorus, and that would be using the shift key. So if we've got the QWERTY keys enabled, you can say um, press shift A, and then we'll go there, or control A will bring us back a chorus. So you can navigate quite easily and there's uh, other options to go a section ahead, a screen ahead, a certain number of bars ahead. If you did this, it'll type in a number and you could say, I want to go four bars ahead. Or in back in this case, I'd press the back button. So now um, let's uh, stop the song, which is the escape key, and, and explore it. This will allow control by the QWERTY keys. This will allow control by the MIDI keyboard. And the MIDI keyboard we've set all MIDI notes to correspond to all these functions and if you press the help button here you'll see a list of exactly what MIDI keys control. Furthermore you can use the 
MIDI keyboard itself to turn on this mode off and on because if you're a piano player you might want to use your piano for normal piano playing but if I hit the B flat key I want this MIDI keyboard control turned on then I can do my function keys then I'll turn it off and resume piano playing and um, uh, the B key is even nicer because as you hold that down the mode will be set so if you have a, a specific thing that you know that a certain MIDI note will jump to the end of the song you just need to hold down the B and and uh, press the MIDI note and it'll jump to the end of the song and you would not have had to get up from your MIDI keyboard to accomplish any of that. But now we'll show you uh, uh, how to get some custom sections happening in a song. So we'll load in another song which should be present on your folder which is a song with one long chorus actually the same song that we unfolded to a long chorus and you can see here that it's not of the format that we can just say go to the next chorus or go to the last chorus and um, we'll show you what you can do here um, we've actually typed in bar numbers for this specific um, sections of the tune but well, let's say we hadn't done that we'll press the blank button so now there's none here and this is how you would have seen it in its default state so we would have said let's do some custom ones and let's type in our bar numbers so you could go ahead and type in numbers 1, 5, etc. And the format of this is um, if you had a song with three choruses and you wanted bar 5, chorus 3, you'd type in uh, 5 slash 3. And, uh, but this song it doesn't have uh, three choruses, it only has one chorus. So uh, we'll, we need to type in the numbers in here. But we can show you an easier method, which would be to, to type in the... Um, use this fill function which will work in certain cases meaning if the if the sections you want are in fact where you've put part markers which is is a reasonable assumption then you can just press this fill button and it'll put wherever there's a part marker in the song it'll put that and of course you can um, um, customize that so now uh, if you if you start the song playing uh, and you j and you press the four button, it'll jump to uh, number bar number 21. Or if you press three on your keyboard, it's going to jump to the third section, which is bar five, 85. So uh, you're allowed to do this. And now jumping a section ahead will actually, obviously, or or ahead a section will do the same thing. Go bar go from bar five to bar 21 on these things. So you can assign for, for your own songs very specific section points. And so that's a basic tour of this conductor window. Just remember that there's the these are for the sections. These are for jumping back or jumping ahead. And this one is just to turn looping on for certain uh, things if you want it to loop four bars or loop apart and this is to turn looping off specifically and this area controls when the thing happens normally you'd want it to happen right away but if you wanted it to happen at the end of the current bar you would set that along the lines and this is whether you want the MIDI keyboard to control it this is if you want the QWERTY keyboard to control it and these are just some playback functions on here so I hope you enjoy the conductor that brings us to the end of the Band in a Box 2006 for Windows video tutorial. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you enjoy using Band in a Box 2006 for Windows. You're listening to Band in a Box playing through the Roland VSC DirectX synthesizer using ASIO drivers which provide near zero latency. These are new features found in Band in a Box 2006 for Windows. We hope you enjoy the other new features found in Band in a Box, such as the conductor window, which we've re reviewed with you, sequencer window, VST plugins, notation enhancements such as notation symbols, style patch changes at A and B, and many more. You can find a complete list of features in the help file for Band in a Box. There's also online help in terms of a manual that you can find with your upgrade.
And there's also help by visiting either our webpage, which is pgmusic.com, or our forums, where we have Band in a Box forums and other programs like Power Tracks, wish lists, and forums in other languages. Thanks for using Ban in a Box and supporting our company, and have fun.